recently filed affidavits in a major lawsuit against New York Cardinal Timothy Dolan and North American College seminary officials reveal disturbing new details confirming allegations of sexual predation, cover-up, and retaliation against seminarians. Father Adam Park, who abruptly relinquished his post as the North American College vice rector, faces multiple allegations of sexual harassment and misconduct. The North American College rector, Father Peter Harmon, is also stepping down amid allegations that he retaliated against seminarians and engaged in graphic sexual acts at an orgy with Archbishop George Lucas. The allegations against the defendants were found credible by a former special agent in charge of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In the wake of Harmon's impending departure, yet another former North American College seminarian has come forward in a damning affidavit to describe his own eyewitness account of Park's sexual misconduct toward seminarians and Harmon's role in covering it up. In a sworn statement, the former North American College seminarian affirmed that he and others at the North American College witnessed that Park, quote, openly displayed uninvited homosexual behavior toward subordinate seminarians who were, quote, young, handsome, athletic, naive, and who exhibited vulnerable characteristics. He went on to state, quote, Given Park's power over North American College seminarians, his actions were unquestionably inappropriate and led to great dread among many of my peers. According to the former North American College seminarian, Park's repeated grooming and sexual harassment of subordinates were followed by what he called a disturbing display of distress on the part of one targeted seminarian at a conference on sexual abuse of power. Described as crying out for help, the distressed seminarian was reported to have frantically voiced detailed accounts of predation and asked what he should do if he found himself sexually exploited by a superior. His outbursts were said to have angered Harmon, who, red-faced, shut down the distraught seminarian. The former seminarian also affirmed, quote, I and many other North American College seminarians feared that were we to report Park's openly sexual advances to Harmon or other seminary officials, we would suffer retaliation or find our vocations ended by the North American College's political network of career-oriented officials. The network, according to the affidavit, included disgraced ex-Cardinal Theodore McCarrick and Cardinal Donald Wuerl, described as frequent patrons and visitors at the North American College. Both McCarrick, who ordained Park, and Wuerl, who oversaw Park's appointment as vice rector, were themselves ousted for engaging in or covering up abuse against seminarians. The former seminarian recounted how, after reporting sexual predation, he himself suffered reprisals more than one year after the Vatican and responsible bishops received and ignored reports informing them of problems at the North American College. Had the bishops acted on the reports they received, this seminarian's reprisals could likely have been prevented. The former North American College seminarian's testimony is only one of numerous other accounts corroborating the allegations in the lawsuit. In June of 2021, a separate affidavit was submitted by another subject of Park's misconduct, who recounted Park's sexual advances and Harmon's cover-up of reports he received about Park. Another former North American College seminarian described how Park repeatedly sexually harassed him and later taunted him for objecting to these advances. This seminarian left 
the North American College within six months of his disturbing encounters with Park. The lawsuit also contains newly filed testimony by the former FBI special agent in charge, who found the allegations of sexual misconduct and cover-up to be credible. The former FBI special agent in charge's latest affidavit unveils deceptive steps taken by Archbishop Lucas and the Diocese of Springfield in Illinois to cover up an orgy alleged to have involved Harmon and Lucas in the presence of seminarians. Debunking an internal special panel created by Lucas himself and headed by a defense attorney he retained to bury these allegations, the former FBI special agent in charge described how the outcome of Lucas's panel amounted to nothing more than a whitewash. The former FBI special agent in charge explained that Lucas's discredited panel relied upon Lucas's attorney, who could not reveal the guilt of his accused client, quote, without committing a breach of the attorney-client relationship. Lucas's own selection of his internal panel members, which amounted to, quote, a trial in which the defendant selects his own jury. Concealment of evidence and omission of critical facts and witnesses, including the fact that informants were allegedly threatened by Lucas to prevent them from exposing the allegations. Asking the eyewitness only one question, which was both unrelated and entirely irrelevant to the orgy allegations. And eclipsing the eyewitness's allegations with irrelevant ad hominem attacks. The former FBI special agent in charge concluded that based upon the evidence, he finds the eyewitness's account of the orgy to be entirely credible. The former special agent in charge added that in 2021, the eyewitness again freely submitted to questioning and stands behind his sexual misconduct allegations against Harmon and Lucas. With the post of the North American College rector typically regarded as a stepping stone to higher office in the church, Harmon's departure following the lawsuit filings fits the pattern of rectors in other seminaries whose careers ended after being exposed for committing or co covering up sexual misconduct. The news comes after Harmon's ordinary and the North American College Board of Governors were themselves exposed for burying accusations they received against Harmon and Park for nearly two years. Along with Park, Harmon becomes the second accused North American College official this year to be leaving his post amid the sexual allegations. Previous court filings revealed Cardinal Dolan's role in covering up sexual misconduct at the North American College, which had the potential to out the North American College, where Dolan was rector in the wake of findings that one in 12 seminarians there tested HIV positive, mainly due to male-to-male -male sexual transmission. Harmon, whom he recommended for ordination, and Lucas, with whom he lived, studied, and was promoted in the St. Louis Archdiocese. And Dolan's own history of covering up abuse or reprising against whistleblowers in St. Louis, Washington, D.C., Milwaukee, and New York. Previous affidavits confirm that Cardinal Dolan, along with over 30 U.S. and Vatican bishops and other responsible officials, failed to act upon more than seven reports containing allegations regarding misconduct and retaliation at the North American College. With an abundance of evidence and witnesses coming forward to testify against the defendants, it was reported that Dolan's auxiliary bishop, John O'Hara, was caught attempting to, quote, prevent or interfere with potential witnesses whom he believed would be providing incriminating testimony in the lawsuit. 
O'Hara's underhanded acts after he himself received and covered up reports of misconduct at the North American College serve only to support the validity of the allegations which the defendants fear will be exposed. Seminarians who are coming forward to recount their own abuse confirm that the tactics used to cover up sexual misconduct at the North American College are part of a much broader pattern of cover-up and retaliation alleged to have taken place in over 40 seminaries and dioceses in recent years. With the sexual predation crisis in seminaries left unchecked by complicit church officials, Victims' advocates are hopeful that the groundbreaking lawsuit against Cardinal Dolan and the North American College officials will give voice to scores of abused seminarians who have yet to be heard. Anyone wishing to support the Save Our Seminarians Fund and to help cover the legal cost of the effort to protect vulnerable seminarians is encouraged to contribute at the link below. Anyone wishing to share additional information may write to Save Our Seminarians at yahoo.com. Anyone wishing to read the findings of an 18 month independent investigation addressing the present day culture of sexual predation and cover ups in U.S. seminaries may access it at the link below. <laughs>